Lightning widgets. Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to use a brush in Lightroom to correct white balance issues. Now, if you're like me, um, when you go out and make images, you, you always try to get things right in camera. Um, but that being said, balancing your light, that is, making sure that light kind of come on your subject matches light, ambient light on the background is one of the bigger challenges I find in shooting. If you're not careful and you don't take the time kind of at the moment to make sure that the light coming out of your flash, for example, matches um, the inside of a house, which is tungsten lighting, you can kind of have this color shift or this uh, difference in, in the two types of light that just doesn't look right. It doesn't jive very well together. Um, now you correct that in camera by using gels, uh, little pieces of plastic that kind of go over your color pieces of plastic to go over your flash um, and it makes things look all pretty. Um, that being said, I am sometimes lazy when I'm out there and I don't always, rightly or wrongly, I don't always put gels on my flashes and my studio lights to kind of balance. One of the beautiful things about Adobe Lightroom 4, I believe, is when it first came out, and now Adobe 5, uh, Lightroom 5, of course, is that it finally kind of gave the ability to use a, a brush to uh, impact white balance. In the past, white balance was always kind of a global adjustment, and you couldn't kind of go in on certain parts of an image and correct them. Well, that has changed, and to me, it was one of the best selling points of uh, Lightroom 4, and I use it quite frequently. So let's take a look at this um, particular image here. So this is a portrait I, I took in my home city of Yellowknife, and you can notice that this is exactly what I'm talking about. So this was photographed in somebody's living room, and using kind of the ambient light that was there uh, with a couple of light bulbs in lamps just out of scene here, it kind of produced a, an orange-toned background, which I like. I, I, it's kind of a warm feeling, and um, it suits very kind of naturally the environment that I'm shooting in. However, that being said, the light coming out of my flash does not jive with that light. The light coming out of my flash here seems very cool, a little bit on the magenta side, um, so I know I gotta correct that. Now, if I just, for example, um, change this globally, so right here you can see what my white balance was shot at, um, as shot, and if I change this globally, I can move this slider here and warm up the skin tone to where I think they should be. But to me, that makes the background a little bit too orange, uh, which I don't like. I kind of actually liked it closer to where it was shot out of camera. So I kind of have this imbalance. I've got to be able to correct it somehow. And there's a couple ways you can do this. But the way I'm going to show you here today is to just basically kind of set the background where you want it the ambient light, which to me right about there is a little bit warmer than what came straight out of camera. Um, I know I still got to warm this up a bit and perhaps shift the magenta tone on it just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do that using a brush. So I'm going to go over here to the brush tool. Now one key thing about using brushes, um, and this applies to all kinds of brushes, not just the white balance brushes, and I'm going to point this out to you, is there's this great little tool called Auto Mask. Now what Auto Mask does is it allows you to um, basically stay within lines a little easier to help prevent that kind of ugly looking halo that can sometimes appear um, if you're not careful and you don't stay within your lines when you use a brush. Um, for example, let me just zoom in here on her face a little bit. So with this Auto Mask turned on, so with this turned on and this button right here kind of selected, when you use this brush and I start painting over her, um, it will show you exactly kind of where you're painting, uh, which is really helpful because I don't want to paint right here or here or here, for example, because that's going to make it too orange if I'm kind of making her skin tones warmer. So just to show you what I mean, let me kind of go a little bit on the warm side here with a brush. So I'm using the temp drop down on kind of your brush presets. Um, basically, it just sets everything else to zero and allows you to just influence what you want. It doesn't really matter what you set this to now because you can always change it after the fact. Um, but I'm just going to go in here, and because this is painted uh, checked, you're going to notice kind of this all turned to red when I when I paint over. Now that's not actually what 
color or skin tone I'm giving her, but it just allows you to help see where exactly you're painting. So I'm going to do that first. So basically, I'm just going to kind of... The thing about this auto mask is see where I'm going over the line right there? And it's only when I go way over that it kind of goes outside the line of her neck. Now, let me just go back there. Um, but if I'm reasonably careful, so if I just stay right here, even though that brush is going over a little bit, you're not going to see me paint over that the line of her neck because that's what auto mask does. It tries to stay within lines. So I'm going to do that again. And I'm going to kind of do it kind of just impact all the areas that I want to warm up here a bit. So I basically want to do her whole face. Do, 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 do. Okay, and we'll get her arms. Her hands look pretty cool to me, so I'm going to kind of do that as well. Let's kind of make this brush a little bit bigger, and we'll go over her arm. Let me just zoom out a bit here, just to see what else i got to check. Just We'll get the bottom of her arm as well. Do, 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 do. Don't really worry too much with the blacks here, but so basically this is the whole area that I want to make warmer in this image. Let me zoom back in. Okay, so now I'm going to uncheck this. So that basically just told me the areas that I'm painting over. Now I can adjust this to whatever I want. See if I go this way, it goes really warm, really cool. And you just got to go with what you think feels right. So right here, to me, somewhere around there looks like kind of a natural skin tone. And I'm just going to change the magenta to green slide or two to see if I want to change that at all. But no, even just using the, uh, the orange-blue slider, the temp slider, kind of does the trick here. I don't want to go too strong. I'm going to tone that down just a bit. And I'm going to zoom out here. Now to me, that looks way better. So if I do quickly uh, before and after on this picture, before, after, I've kind of very quickly corrected that imbalance and I have something that I'm really happy with. Now of course, if I'm actually doing this in real life, I'm going to spend a little more care kind of going around all the areas of her skin and just making sure that there's no spots that I missed, but I mean, the beauty of Lightroom is I find it's a very quick and easy tool, and this is kind of a prime example with how fast that all went. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you very much.